This is the final part of my Julia Dorr films and moreover it's a special on the occasion of breaking through the 2000 subscribers wall. 2000 subscribers, imagine that, it feels so good. Here's a giant thank to you guys who watch my films and especially to those who keep on liking and commenting them in a most friendly and encouraging way. Thank you very much indeed. Now, I thought about what sort of special I could make to celebrate this milestone. You see, if there's one thing I've learned about Julia's during the past months, I'm not the only one with difficult doors, and the spot where rust hits hardest is down at the bottoms of the door frames. So if you find shabby, pitted and porous sheet metal down there, and if you have a grinder and access to a welder, there's a simple and safe method to make these parts nice and neat again. Here's a guide how you can get there in seven simple steps. The basic idea of this tutorial is to buy the repair panels as a spare part. You've seen me sharpening and beating them from pieces of sheet metal, but that's a bit of a personal preference. If you try to reach your goal in an efficient way, you're certainly better off to just buy them. If things are really bad and the entire lower end of the door frame is gone, replacing it as a whole is inevitable and I did that with door number 3. Please refer to the according film. However, based on the doors I've seen on eBay and at spare part markets, in most of the cases that would be overkill. And that's why I suggest to trim the repair panel to the size that is needed to replace all the rusty parts and throw away the rest of it. The positioning of the repair panel will be developed from the corner point. That's where it really needs to be aligned and flush from the start. Everything else can be settled as the panel morphs into the door. I can hardly imagine doing this work without these welding pliers, so they are really a must. Cleaning the parts where welding takes place is important, otherwise the paint will just burn off and we don't want to inhale these fumes, do we?
I'm deeply aware about the profound dullness of watching a guy using a cutting disc. But in that case, it actually is the only thing of the whole process which is a little challenging. So take your time, don't use much force, rather let the disc dance over the metal. Take care not to lose contact to the guiding rail, that is the repair panel, and concentrate on maintaining the 45 degree angle. Cutting through the original tack welds needs some attention to avoid that the disc misaligns. The way to go is to limit the contact force to the weight of the angle grinder without any additional pressing. I recommend to use a quality cutting disc for this purpose. I made the experience that it generally makes a difference. The thickness of the disc is one millimeter. At this very point you can see clearly how simple and elegant Fitzy's method is. Pressing the panels onto each other under the angle of 45 degrees will give a perfectly flush surface. Placing the butt welding spots is a much easier thing to do if the panels are cut under this 45 degree angle because the wire in any case will find some material to melt onto. If you have to spot weld a bigger gap, 
that is cut straight, it sometimes needs igniting the arc at one side and smear the melt over to the other, which requires some more concentration and experience. Not with the 45 degree cut though, where I can hardly imagine anything going wrong with welding, especially if the panels are kept cool with some help of compressed air to avoid them warping. It would be best, of course, to also weld the short sides of the repair panel under this 45 degree angle, but that would require a small cutting disc of maybe 35 millimeters, and I wanted to make this film with a set of tools not too exotic. Now, butt welding these thin panels is a science of its own, and there are as many best practices out there as there are people who master it. I personally found that with my equipment, my personal skill and given the 45 year old steel of this car it's much easier to weld small gaps than bigger ones on the other hand of course with gaps that small the panels tend to warp and so you may want to work very slowly to keep them cool The hammer will help to get the panels flush and you can do that step by step while you build the joint as you add welding spots. If you recall, these ready-made repair panels, they aren't always fitting perfectly to the door frame as it is. However, if you stay away from the corners of the door, and normally you can because rust as a matter of experience appears more in the center section, it's a rather easy thing to do to get the shapes aligned with the hammer and the dolly. If you don't have a dolly at hand, a second heavier hammer will do the job just as good. If you're concerned already about the corner of this door being a bit rusty, as we will see in just a minute, this is superficial rust and we can remove it nicely when sending down the welding spots. The very same process is now applied to the second corner. Two welding spots to frame and stabilize the area to be fitted, the hammer and the dolly to align one panel to the other and then weld it all together.
At this point, with the repair panel properly fitted to the door, it only remains to fill up the joint with welding spots. Again, slowly and with a lot of cooling in between. Some intermediate sanding will reveal the spots that have been left out and then you can take another go to finalize the welding work. Surprisingly, the one thing that created the most problems during this project was grinding down the beads. Driven from the vanity to create invisible welding repairs, numerous times I removed too much material. So please do it better and stop grinding in time. One thing that certainly helps is using the angle grinder instead of the belt grinder, as its grinding patterns are easier to interpret. Today I start with the coarse grinding disc till some tenths of a millimeter remain on the panel and then I continue with the 24 paper disc and slowly and very carefully approximate to flushness. As you can see, the panels aren't entirely straight at this section, which is possibly due to my admittedly very narrow gaps that promote warping. It's better not to sand the bead down completely in this case, because it may well be that otherwise the sheet metal gets too thin. A little body filler solves that problem. Now, one of the reasons why doors are such a good example to practice bodywork is the fact that you can always reach both sides of your welds. And while the looks of the flip side aren't that important, it is however very important that everything is nicely welded through without any pinholes or gaps or cracks that would invite corrosion to return. Everything else was finished exactly the way I did it with door number 1 to 3. If you liked this tutorial and found my tips useful, please send me a like and sign up to my channel.